You shall have no other gods before me. The fear of God. There's nine statutes, at least nine that I found. Uh, you shall have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me is what the commandment says. In Strong's, the word before is al. That means above, over, upon, or against. Here's how I understand this. You can have other gods, just not above the God of the Scriptures. And God okayed that in 1 Samuel 8. King David was a God that submitted to the God of, of the universe. He was okay. Several of Israel's gods submitted to the God of the universe. And that was okay because they didn't change our law. But several gods or kings don't follow God's law. And that's where this is a problem. So we need to understand this just as it's written. We can't have any gods before the God of the scriptures. You shall fear and reverence God. Okay, fear is the Hebrew word yare, which means to fear morally, to revere. I think this word references both fear as in trembling and being afraid, as, as well as reverence. So we're to hold God in great respect, and we're supposed to fear Him as well. Uh, why should we fear the Lord? The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear Him. The fear of the Lord produces obedience. Uh, it does. I know, that, I know that with my kids, when they're afraid of me, when they have a healthy fear of me, they, they're obedient. And we're supposed to be the same way. Uh, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's said several times in the Scripture. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear Him. Probably because if you fear Him, you're going to want His will. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So fearing the Lord means we're going to hate breaking His law, hate evil. The fear of the Lord prolongs days. And the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And the fear of the Lord is for our good. So that's why we're to fear God. Because everything about it produces in our lives good things. You shall not fear a reverence man. This is the opposite. If we fear man, where are we putting God? We're putting him a step below man. So we need to put God's commandments in him first. Ye shall fear every man his father and mother. Now we are to fear our parents. Why? Because they're that first God-given authority. And Jesus even confirmed it when he said, Fear not them which kill the body. But we are to fear God because he can not only kill our body, but throw ourselves into hell. You shall know that God is one and love him with all that you have. That's the Shema and the first commandment. In fact, Jesus quoted that when he said, This is the first of the great commandments, that we shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. In Strong's Dictionary, one Lord, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, is united, that is one. God is both united and first. Love is a hob. It's agapeo in Greek, to love, to have affection for. John says love means to keep the commandments. So to love God and put Him first means to obey His commandments. Them that love me and keep my commandments. That's where John got it from. He said over and over in his uh, epistles, to love God and keep His commandments. To love God and keep His commandments. You go to the Torah, it says over and over again, God says, them that love me and keep my commandments. That's exactly where John was getting it from. Uh, you shall not profane God's name. Strong's Dictionary, Yahweh is His name. It means self-existent or eternal. There are no vowels that we know of. We have no idea how to pronounce His name today, which is very unfortunate. This name, though, is a description of who He is. He's the self-existent or eternal one. Profane is the Hebrew word kalal, which means to wound, to dissolve, to break one's word. This means we are not to dissolve the covenant or break one's word by breaking the covenant. If we're going to jump into agreement with God, we need to be serious about it. You shall keep God's laws forever. And I'm not going to go through this again, but the first one I scrolled through all the times in the Torah, it says it. And it takes about two minutes to go through them all. But over and over and over again, God says, keep my commandments, keep my commandments. And he adds the word forever. 
So it's very important that we keep His commandments forever. We always got to remember it's not gone. It hasn't been abolished. But I'm just going to click past that because you've already seen that. Uh, you shall not tempt God as they did in Mahara when they tested God for not having water. Uh, number eight says, God will be faithful to those that love Him and keep His commandments. He's always faithful. And God will discipline you if you do not keep His laws. So it's a father-son relationship.